No stranger's story has been set on the pages of history than the story of the Spanish monastery. The Monastery of St. Bernard is located in North Member Beach, Florida. It is a place of medieval art and great history. The story begins and ends with the greatest jigsaw puzzle the world has ever seen. Who is Alfonso VII of Spain? Alfonso VII is essentially what we would call a warrior king of the Middle Ages, uh, and a rather successful one at that. Alfonso VII comes into uh, the environment of Spain during the Middle Ages at a time when all the kingdoms of North and West and South Spain are warring against each other. Not only Christians against Moors, but Christians against Christians as well, and Moors against Moors, surprisingly enough. St. Bernard, Abbot of Claveau, set location requirements for all Cistercian monasteries. Alfonso VII offered a site with these requirements and St. Bernard accepted. You may well ask why Alfonso VII would build a monastery in this inhospitable area where he built it. Uh, as a matter of fact, he did that because he wanted to bring the Cistercian monks to this particular area. It was an area that he knew he could use as a base for his religious um, crusade. These individuals would carve their names onto the stones, even though they could not read and write, but they had a, a symbol of their own, and these are the markings that you see on the stones. What was the purpose of it? They wanted to get paid. All of us would like to get paid for our labor, and so did they. So they could identify the stones that they had worked on and say, yes, I have worked on X number of stones, and I would like to get paid this much amount. As you walk in, you will see that the facade of the monastery has those Romanesque arches that are absolutely beautiful. They are the epitome of what many people consider to be the hive of uh, Roman architecture. On the other hand, you walk in and you have beautiful Gothic uh, vaulted ceilings. Uh, it's really quite uh, a, a wonderful combination of the two, and it gives an aura of uh, piety and, and everything that one would want to have in a place where one comes to worship, where one comes to reflect upon your, your inner self. Two years after the first monks took residence, Alfonso VII gave the monastery thousands of acres near the estate of Sacramina. The religious orders began to lose the, the strength that they had during the Middle Ages. Uh, after a while, during the 1800s, in fact, after the Napoleonic Wars, you're going to have the decline of the monasteries in Spain and all over Europe, to the point where some of the monks are essentially going to flee the monasteries and some of them even go into hiding in caves. William Randolph Hearst is going to be able to take a look at this Spanish monastery which he had never seen before. He had only heard from his sources that it was there and it was available and he wanted it as a halfway point in this incredible luxurious home that he was building in California. Hearst bought the monastery for the price said to have been a half a million dollars. Hearst sent a staff of architects to chart and draw the ancient building. Detailed diagrams were made to guide the reconstruction. They painted the number on each stone, each column, and each capital. The monastery was very difficult to um, disassemble and get ready for the uh, trip to America because they had to cut down the wood, cut down the trees for the wood for the crates. And once it was packed up and on the train to the coast, the um, railroad tracks were in really bad shape. So he had to build like 40 miles of railroad tracks to get it to his destination. So it ended up costing over a million dollars. it arrives in New York, just in time to be quarantined, because in Seville, during that period, in the 1920s, you had had an outbreak of hoof and mouth disease. The um, customs agents took apart the boxes, burnt the hay, and then packed the boxes up again, but not in the, in the right boxes or in the right order. So it was really difficult afterwards when they had to build it because it was a big puzzle. Everything was out of order. The repacking took three months and cost Hearst nearly $75,000. There were nearly 36,000 pieces in all. 
However, when repacking, the workmen mix match the numbered stones with the numbered crates. The fantastic jigsaw puzzle has been created. Well, it would be in the 1950s that all of a sudden you will have a resurgence in the interest in the Spanish monastery. You're going to have Raymond Moss and William Edgemont. These two individuals had a love for medieval art and saw the potential in this monastery. Raymond Moss and William Edgemont were the two businessmen that bought the monastery from Hearst after he was going through financial difficulties and moved it to South Florida once they found the property that they were interested in. This was a nursery before and the land was available so they rebuilt it here. Certainly 22 acres in North Miami Beach, that land has been sold off but the monastery is still there and it was the most complex and giant of jigsaw puzzles that you can imagine because the crates had been put together in Spain 25 years earlier, even earlier than that, and they had been marked, each one of the crates had been marked by individuals who had used some Byzantine type of method which nobody could really put together again. On top of that, the stones had been placed back in the wrong crates and so what these two individuals essentially were confronted with was one of the greatest puzzles in the world. So now the Spanish monastery sits on North Miami Beach and it is a jewel in our community. A Gothic and Romanesque arch uh, architectural form that is very, very unique in the world. Many of us wonder whether it was the right thing to take this patrimony from Spain and bring it here to the New World. And yes, we are torn as historians that something like that, as beautiful as that was in its original setting, was taken away from Spain. But on the other hand, here we have something in our own community that really speaks to the issue of the transcendence of history. Being of Spanish descent, first generation American, all my family is from Andalusia, Spain. Perhaps we should have left it in Spain, but as an American, I am so happy that we have it in our backyard and we can take our children to see this wonderful piece of architecture.